Deep beneath the Arctic ice, a massive metal giant the size of two football fields cruised silently through the darkness. Inside this underwater fortress, 160 sailors lived in conditions that would shock you, complete with a swimming pool, sauna, and gym facilities that rivaled luxury hotels. This isn't science fiction. This is the story of the Soviet Typhoon-class submarine, the largest nuclear submarine ever built in human history. These underwater giants displaced 48,000 tons, more than twice the size of America's largest submarines. To put that in perspective, these monsters were so massive they could surface and launch devastating nuclear strikes without even needing to dive. The sheer engineering marvel of these vessels changed submarine warfare forever, and what happened inside them will leave you amazed. The last of these giants, the Dmitry Donskoy, served for nearly 40 years before being retired in February 2023. But the secrets of life aboard these floating cities remained classified for decades. Today, we're going to take you inside the most incredible submarine ever created and show you exactly what daily life looked like for the brave sailors who called these underwater fortresses home. Introduction to the Typhoon Class The story begins in the heart of the Cold War. American Ohio-class submarines were dominating the seas and the Soviet Union needed an answer. What they created was beyond anything the world had ever seen. The Typhoon-class submarine stretched 574 feet in length. That's nearly the length of two football fields placed end-to-end. -end. At 76 feet wide, these submarines were wider than most American homes, but size was just the beginning. These underwater leviathans were built with a revolutionary design featuring multiple pressure hulls, essentially submarines within a submarine. This unique construction not only made them incredibly strong, but also created space that submarine designers had never had before. Space that would be used in ways that would amaze even today's naval engineers. Between 1976 and 1989, the Soviets built six of these incredible machines. Each one cost more than an aircraft carrier and represented the pinnacle of submarine technology. The Americans had nothing that could match their size or capabilities. These weren't just submarines, they were underwater cities designed to stay submerged for months at a time. If you're as amazed by military engineering as we are, type proud in the comments below. The revolutionary design. What made the Typhoon class so special wasn't just its size, it was how that size was used. Traditional submarines cram everything into tight spaces, forcing sailors to live in conditions barely better than prison cells. The Typhoon class changed everything. The secret was in the hull design. Instead of one long pressure hull like conventional submarines, the Typhoon featured five separate pressure hulls. Two main hulls ran parallel to each other, with three smaller hulls positioned strategically around them. This created something unprecedented in submarine design, actual room to breathe. The missile compartment sat between the two main hulls housing 20 massive ballistic missiles. Each of these weapons was over 50 feet long and could deliver multiple nuclear warheads to targets thousands of miles away. But here's what's truly incredible. The submarine was so large that these massive weapons barely took up any space inside. This design philosophy created something the submarine world had never seen before. While American submarines focused on cramming maximum capability into minimum space, the Soviets went the opposite direction. They built a submarine so large that crew comfort became possible for the first time in naval history. The titanium pressure hulls could withstand crushing depths of over 1,300 feet. The outer steel hull was covered with 800 tons of special rubber coating that made these giants nearly invisible to enemy sonar. American submarine commanders would later admit that detecting a Typhoon-class submarine was like trying to find a ghost in the ocean. Life inside the floating Hilton. Now here's where things get truly unbelievable. Soviet sailors quickly nicknamed these submarines floating Hiltons. And once you hear about the facilities inside, you'll understand why. The Soviets didn't just build the world's largest submarine, they built the world's most luxurious one. Let's start with something that will blow your mind. Each Typhoon-class submarine had its own swimming pool, not a tiny bathing area, an actual swimming pool measuring 13 feet by 6 feet and 6 feet deep. This wasn't just for show. Soviet naval tradition included the practice of jumping into cold water after using a sauna for health benefits. So naturally, they built saunas too. The sauna was lined with oak boards and heated using the submarine's nuclear reactor. 
After a session in the 180 degree heat, sailors would jump into the ice cold pool water. This wasn't just luxury. Soviet naval doctors believed this practice kept the crew healthier during long deployments under the ice. But the amenities didn't stop there. Each submarine featured a fully equipped gymnasium with weights, dumbbells, and exercise equipment. Remember, these sailors would spend up to 120 days submerged without seeing sunlight. Physical fitness wasn't just important for health, it was crucial for maintaining morale and mental stability. The living quarters would make modern submarine sailors jealous. Instead of the cramped bunks stacked three high that you find on American submarines, Typhoon crew members had individual cabins. Officers enjoyed two- and four-person rooms complete with wash basins, televisions, and air conditioning. Even the enlisted sailors had private sleeping areas, something unheard of on any other submarine. The common areas featured comfortable padded chairs, wooden paneled walls, and full-size doorways. The walls were decorated with forest landscapes to help sailors forget they were trapped underwater. Two separate dining rooms served the crew, one for officers and another for enlisted personnel and warrant officers. But here's the reality check that might surprise you. These luxury facilities came with strict rules. Crew members needed special permission to use the pool, sauna, or gym. Military duties always came first, and even during calm periods, officers might deny access if the facilities were needed for storage. Former crew members joke that sacks of potatoes spent more time in the swimming pool than the sailors did. The nuclear powerhouse. Powering these underwater giants required incredible engineering. Each Typhoon-class submarine housed two nuclear reactors producing 50,000 horsepower each. To put that in perspective, that's enough power to supply electricity to a small city. This massive power plant could push these 48,000-ton monsters through the water at speeds reaching 27 knots underwater, faster than most surface ships. The nuclear fuel lasted for years without refueling, giving these submarines virtually unlimited range. They could travel around the world multiple times without ever surfacing. The reactors also provided all the electrical power needed for the life support systems, computers, sonar equipment, and, yes, even the heating for that luxury sauna. The engineering required to safely operate two nuclear reactors underwater while maintaining all those luxury facilities was staggering. American naval engineers studied these submarines for decades, trying to understand how the Soviets managed to pack so much capability into a single vessel while maintaining crew comfort. But the real genius was in the quiet operation. Despite their massive size, these submarines could glide through the ocean almost silently. The nuclear reactors were mounted on special shock absorbers, and the entire submarine was covered in sound-dampening materials. American sonar operators described detecting a typhoon as trying to hear a whisper in a thunderstorm. Weapons that changed the world The luxury facilities were impressive, but the real purpose of these submarines was devastatingly serious. Each Typhoon could carry 20 R-39 ballistic missiles, and each missile could deliver up to 10 nuclear warheads to separate targets. That means a single Typhoon-class submarine could destroy 200 different cities with one salvo. These weren't just any missiles. They were monsters. Each R-39 stood over 53 feet tall and weighed more than 80 tons. They had a range of over 5,000 miles, meaning a Typhoon sitting under the Arctic ice could hit targets anywhere in the United States. The accuracy was terrifying. These missiles could hit within 500 yards of their intended target after traveling thousands of miles. What made these weapons truly frightening was the submarine's ability to launch them while surfaced. The Typhoon was so large and stable that it could break through Arctic ice surface and fire its entire missile load in less than 15 minutes. Then it could dive back under the ice and disappear before any retaliation could reach it. American military planners called this capability a first strike option. A single typhoon could theoretically start and end a nuclear war before anyone knew it was there. The psychological impact on Cold War strategy was enormous. Knowing these giants were lurking under the Arctic ice changed how both superpowers thought about nuclear warfare. Daily life. Underwater. Living on a typhoon-class submarine was unlike anything in military history. The 160-man crew operated on a carefully planned schedule designed to keep everyone healthy and sane during months underwater. Unlike smaller submarines where sailors work 18-hour days, Typhoon crews maintained normal 24-hour schedules thanks to the abundant space. Meals were a highlight of submarine life. The galley could store massive amounts of food. 
enough fresh provisions for several months at sea. Soviet naval cooks were specially trained to prepare varied, nutritious meals that would keep crew morale high. The dining rooms featured proper tables and chairs, not the fold-down surfaces found on cramped submarines. Entertainment was crucial for psychological health. Each submarine carried a library of Soviet films and television shows. The common areas featured game tables where off-duty sailors could play chess, cards, or dominoes. Some submarines even had small libraries with hundreds of books to help pass the long hours underwater. Medical care was top-notch. Each submarine had a fully equipped medical bay with an operating room and isolation ward. The ship's doctor could handle everything from routine injuries to major surgery. With missions lasting months, comprehensive medical care wasn't luxury, it was essential for survival. The work schedule rotated among the 19 different compartments. Sailors specialized in everything from nuclear reactor operation to missile maintenance to navigation. Cross-training was mandatory. Every crew member had to understand multiple systems in case of emergencies. But the psychological challenges were real. Spending 120 days underwater with the same 159 people in a metal tube requires special mental strength. The luxury facilities helped, but even with swimming pools and saunas, some sailors struggled with the isolation and confinement. The Arctic Mission These submarines weren't built for tropical cruises. They were designed specifically for Arctic operations. The massive sail was reinforced with extra-thick steel that could smash through ice up to 8 feet thick. When a typhoon surfaced in the Arctic, it was like watching a metal mountain emerge from the frozen wasteland. The Arctic strategy was brilliant and terrifying. These submarines would slip under the polar ice cap and hide on the ocean floor for months. The ice above provided perfect camouflage. No satellite could detect them, and the thick ice blocked most sonar signals. They were essentially invisible until they chose to reveal themselves. Crew rotation was possible even in the Arctic. Special supply ships would meet the submarines at predetermined locations, allowing fresh crews to take over while the submarine remained operational. This meant a typhoon could theoretically stay on patrol indefinitely, with new crews rotating in every few months. The psychological warfare aspect was just as important as the military capability. American naval commanders knew these giants were out there somewhere, but finding them was nearly impossible. The mere knowledge that Typhoon-class submarines were patrolling under the Arctic ice forced the United States to completely rethink its naval strategy. Winter operations in the Arctic tested both man and machine to their limits. Surface temperatures could drop to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but inside the submarine, crew members enjoyed comfortable temperatures maintained by the nuclear reactors. The contrast between the harsh Arctic environment and the luxury facilities inside these submarines was remarkable. The end of an era. By the 1990s, the world was changing rapidly. The Cold War was ending, and maintaining these massive submarines became incredibly expensive. Each typhoon cost more to operate annually than most countries spent on their entire navy. The Russian government faced a difficult decision. Keep these underwater palaces or build more modern, efficient submarines. Economics 1 One by one, the typhoon-class submarines were retired. Three were scrapped in the 2000s with financial help from the United States and Canada, former enemies working together to safely dispose of nuclear weapons. Two more were placed in reserve, leaving only the Dmitry Donskoy in active service. The Dmitry Donskoy became a test platform for new Russian missile systems. Instead of the massive R-39 missiles, it was fitted with modern Balava missiles for testing. This allowed Russian engineers to develop new weapons while keeping the last typhoon operational. In February 2023, even this final giant was retired after nearly 40 years of service. The announcement marked the end of the most ambitious submarine program in history. But the story isn't quite over. In March 2025, Russia announced that the Dmitry Donskoy will become a museum ship in St. Petersburg, allowing future generations to experience these incredible vessels firsthand. The legacy of the Typhoon class extends far beyond their military capabilities. They proved that submarine crews didn't have to suffer in cramped, miserable conditions. Modern submarine designers still study these vessels, looking for ways to improve crew comfort without sacrificing capability. Modern Comparisons and Legacy Today's submarines are marvels of technology, but none match the sheer ambition of the Typhoon class. America's Ohio-class submarines, while highly capable, displace less than half the tonnage of a typhoon. 
Russia's modern Bore-class submarines are smaller, more efficient, and carry fewer crew members, but they lack the incredible crew facilities that made the Typhoons legendary. The Chinese Navy is building larger submarines, but nothing approaches Typhoon proportions. The simple truth is that no nation has the resources or need to build submarines this massive again. Modern missile technology allows smaller submarines to carry the same destructive power that once required these underwater giants. But the engineering lessons learned from the Typhoon program continue to influence submarine design worldwide. The multiple hull concept has been adapted for other vessel types. The crew comfort innovations pioneered on these submarines have improved living conditions throughout the submarine community. American submarine crews still marvel at stories of Soviet sailors enjoying swimming pools and saunas while their counterparts make do with cramped quarters and shared facilities. The Typhoon class proved that military effectiveness and crew comfort don't have to be mutually exclusive. As we look back at these incredible machines, we see more than just weapons of war. We see the pinnacle of human engineering ambition. The willingness to build something so massive, so complex, and so capable that it changed underwater warfare forever. The Typhoon-class submarines represent a unique moment in history when size, power, and luxury came together to create something truly extraordinary. The men who served aboard these underwater giants experienced military service unlike anything before or since. They lived in conditions that most modern sailors can only dream of operating weapons that could reshape the world, all while cruising silently beneath the Arctic ice in the largest submarines ever built. That's the incredible story of life inside the largest nuclear submarine ever built in history. These weren't just military vessels, they were floating cities that redefined what was possible beneath the waves. If you found this journey into submarine history as fascinating as we did, Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more incredible military stories. The engineering marvels and human stories from our military history continue to amaze and inspire us all.